Robert. Yo, what's shaking, AC? What is going on? We both have like really colorful backgrounds today. Where even are you? I am in the offices of Good Company Productions. Uh, it's a music production company that I co-founded with a friend based out of Kitchener-Waterloo. We do talent buying, we do artist management, we do concerts, um, events, production. All the posters you see behind me are event posters from past events that we've done. It's a really cool space. We've got instruments and gear and a war room and a couch and all this sort of stuff. Have you thought about franchising? <laughs> you got enough on your plate. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, lately I've been talking to people about getting more clear on what sets them apart as a franchisor. And I thought I would love to hear your thoughts on this. You know, we think all the time about what we need to do to differentiate ourselves on a consumer level, or we, we should be, if we're not, I know there's a lot of people that aren't, but you know, I think people know to focus on that. When I ask franchisors often, like people that I'm not working with and I ask them like, what, why pick you? You know, they're like, cause we like, Proven systems, um, operational support, <laughs> you know, uh, efficient software, whatever. But it's like so generic, right? You read down the list, you're like, yeah, you're all saying this. And then especially, like, you've got to remember, you are, like, somebody that's looking at Control-V, your business, for example, could also be looking at not only another VR franchise, but they could be looking at, like, other kind of entertainment-style franchises, right? Or... They could even be looking at like a dog dog daycare franchise because they're really more like, I want to be a business owner and I want to find something that fits my lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. They can't even just like keep it on the industry level or like the, you know, you've got to like think beyond that. So like, what do you think about this stuff? What do you well, think? <laughs> I mean, I think the first thing I have to say is in my, oh, well, what? Bye. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> right? I'm drinking Sleeman, okay? <laughs> Um, cheers. I, cheers, cheers, cheers. Just three hours that. later there. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think first of all, it's very important for everyone out there to understand the difference between differentiation and something like a competitive advantage, uh, which I think you and I, Angelo, can talk about in a totally different session. But competitive advantage, or otherwise known as an economic moat, is a bit more tangible in terms of its durability and its sustainability from competitors. Differentiation, to me, is what causes somebody to pick you over somebody else. Maybe not as heavily regarding things like sustainability sustainability or durability of your concept, right? So to me, one of the key factors in differentiation really is, is a little softer. It's, it's how does that franchisor or potential franchisor feel about this concept, feel about you being a leader, feel about the, the systems that you've designed, um, your ability to interact with them, to support them, um, but also how do they feel about your brand? How do they feel about um, the lifestyle that they'll have? Because that will differentiate your concept from somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always say that like it could be a combination of things too. It's like you could have like we, you know, we talk about traction in the three uniques, right? Yep. So it could be um, a combination of uh, maybe it, it is something to do with software and technology, but that's also maybe supplemented by a, a, like the leadership in the business. And maybe even the founder themselves can be part of the differentiator if the founder is really good at you know, putting themselves out there and drumming up business and that sort of thing. Do you agree? I, I totally agree. And I think it, it's, it's multiple wait, things. Wait, you don't right? have to agree. You can disagree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I disagree in that case. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but like if you're looking for a franchise concept, you can say, okay, this company A has awesome software. Company B may also have awesome software. And C through the end of the alphabet do not. So these two have differentiated themselves from those other ones. They may have very equal software. But now A might have something in addition that B doesn't have, which is sort of what you were saying is the three uniques. Differentiation isn't just about... Um, being different, but being uh, sustainably different because there's enough components to it to make you different. You know, I love um, thinking about specifically branding and the marketing behind behind a concept and how it's conveyed to a customer, which again is a whole other rant that we can go down, but that plays a factor too. You know what I mean? What's your corporate voice? How do you put yourself out into the community? Do you want to be a part of that? So Robert, what is your control V differentiator on the level of why should somebody become a franchise, uh, franchisee of control V versus yeah, okay. 
versus another, say, VR franchise or a laser tag or other entertainment franchise or a dog daycare, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. So for the purposes of anyone watching this rant, I won't go into things that actually differentiate the economics of the business because that's an economic moat. Okay. And I can go on about that. But what differentiates us is um, uh, you don't go home smelling like burgers and fries. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's the concept behind it. Our, our corporate voice is very playful. You have fun. Now there's other companies that have fun, but you have fun with a series of processes that have been lined out to make your operations easier. You have fun with a work environment that's very different than something like a quick service restaurant. Uh, so all of these combined together uh, differentiates you, differentiates us, you know? And even when you look at other different um, VR, uh, VR businesses or even LBEs, locations, based businesses like trampoline parks or, or whatever it is, um, they'll have their own differentiators and it caters to a different um, person in terms of their mentality, you know, mm -hmm. maybe. I think there's something about also you guys with one of the things that that's always stood out for me is the vendor relationships that you have formed and nurtured. Yeah. And whether that's you know comparing you against other VR arcades or or, or just um, even if it was a yeah, different concept altogether, that's something that I see a fair bit with with franchisors where when I see that I, it, it's comforting because it takes time to build relationships and if if you get a copycat coming in to, trying to do that, it yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's part of it. I think it's You're so right. You know, when we started, we were the first in North America. So right. <laughs> so right. I agree. Again. I know. Like, did I pay you to say that? Like, oh uh, yeah. No, but so when we started, we were the first in North America and there was like 10 games Wait, available. You're so right. We are so awesome. <laughs> okay. If you put it that way. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry. There were 10 different. You were there, there was roughly about 10 different games and we could have very easily just purchased the games put them into our arcade and rolled with it. But we kind of had the foresight to know that the arcade, the VR arcade industry is going to expand. These people are going to want royalties for their content, just like a DJ, you know, has to pay for music royalties. We're going to do the ethical thing and we're going to reach out to them and offer to pay them. And we did that from the very beginning, which solidified, I think us as somebody who supports our vendors, supports the VR industry, um, you know, and, and it, I, from what I've heard, people love this stuff, you know, not only people who want to franchise with us, they see that our moral compass is kind of focused the same way, but the vendors are like, you know what, thanks for looking out for us. We appreciate it. Some of them make more money off of us. Some of us, some of them less, um, but they love the fact that we're contributing to this ecosystem together. Yeah. Um, that's something that my dad did really well at M&M &M Meat Shops, um, you know, was building relationships with vendors early on. And that's actually another rant we could even rant about. Oh my um, God, we have so much okay. content. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, building those, so by getting those, um, those suppliers or vendors on board early that believed in the bigger vision and then fostering those relationships so that as they went on, it was like, I guess it's kind of starting to talk about economic moats a little bit, but mm. so let's hold that there. Hold that yeah. thought for another time while you drink your beer. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so differentiate your franchisors, get it figured out. What sets you apart? Get clear on it. Be able to tell the difference. And you need to know from both a consumer standpoint and a franchisor to, you know, franchisee standpoint, right? Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that we should cap this off here. Is it time? All right. To yeah. <laughs> How, are we going to try to count down again? <laughs> yeah, three, two, one. Go be, be awesome. Um, no, we're <laughs> <forget>. <laughs>